Good afternoon everybody. This is a brief video tutorial to show you how to install and begin using Motion Meerkat. Here we're going to type Motion Meerkat into Google and come to the URL. This will lead you to my web page. My name is Ben Weinstein. I'm a graduate student at Stony Brook University studying ecology. And here on my web page you'll see a link to Motion Meerkat. Motion Meerkat is a module for integrating motion video detection in ecological monitoring. Here you'll be able to download Motion Meerkat directly from my Dropbox. If you press download here, you'll see that it comes to a new Dropbox link. The file is 40 megabytes. Press download. On some browsers, you may need to clear a security clearance to allow to download a EXE directly from the internet. Here it'll download directly um, to your machine. Currently Windows is the only operating system that is supported, but we're working on a Mac and Linux setup. Press run and this will instantiate a installer. This is a normal installer window, much like you'll see for many programs. Please accept the license, which says that any user is welcome to um, make use of Motion Meerkat, but to not make it a commercial product. Here, you'll install it uh, in a normal location. I suggest keeping all the defaults here. Oh, you won't see that on your screen. I've already had mine installed. Here I'm going to create a desktop icon just so we can quickly access it. It should install in a matter of seconds. Motion Meerkat instantiates its own version of Python as well as FFmpeg and OpenCV libraries. Once you have installed it, you will both open uh, Motion Meerkat to run as well as there's a wiki that helps organize and show the defaults of all the parameters. So here's the Motion Meerkat insignia. It's called Motion Meerkat, of course, because Meerkats are well known for their scanning and constant wariness. And in this file, you'll see a wiki page which users can submit and help to, submit questions as well, of all the inputs um, that Motion Meerkat takes in, and as well as uh, some general background information. This is all part of a GitHub repository that can be accessed, and source code is available here for all users who are interested. Motion Meerkat is 100% uh, open source. So now you can go to Program Files and open up Motion Meerkat. And if you double click on the icon, you'll see that it'll open up this screen. Motion Meerkat does not have a GUI interface yet, but rather just a series of questions which allows you to access the standard tools. You will basically provide a file, some parameters about motion sensitivity, and that video file will be scanned through by Motion Meerkat, and candidate motion JPEGs will be returned to a file source. So here it says, welcome to Motion Meerkat, automated capture of motion frames from a video file. For help, see this wiki, which is the wiki you see behind you. And default values are in parentheses to select the defaults hit enter. Um, for questions, you can answer in the affirmative by typing Y and in the negative by typing N. If you'd like to set a region of interest, which we'll show you, type Y and the first frame of the video will be shown. So our first question is batch or single file run. Here I'm gonna run a single file. If you had a batch file, you would want to just supply a name, a directory of all, of, uh, a directory where all of your videos are stored. Here, because we're running file, we're asking for a single video input. Now, the easiest thing to do is to have a little notepad open and copy and paste your uh, file path so that you can quickly change the slashes. You'll find that Windows uh, makes forward slashes and we actually went back slashes. So here, if I go to C program files and I scroll down to Motion Meerkat you can see that all Motion Meerkat's installations come with a data file that helps you first test it. Uh, if we watch that data file here, this is coming from a plot watcher pro camera. These are flowers and we're going to look for a hummingbird feeding on those flowers. Here we go. There's the bird and the rest of the frame is empty. This test file comes with all uh, installations of Motion Meerkat and allows for quick uh, checks that everything has gone right. So we're going to run this file using the Motion Meerkat setup. I'm going to copy the file path as well and type the name, which looks like plot, plot watcher test tlv. And I'm going to change the slashes to forward. You'll find that many programs uh, require forward rather than backslashes. And I'm also going to make a double copy of this. Um, actually, no, I'm not. So now we can paste in our de desired file input. And it's going to ask us for a destination folder. Um, right now, I'm just going to put it on the C drive as a little test. 
You'll find sometimes that depending on your user settings, you may or may not be allowed to save within your My Documents, and that you may have to save on the C or D drives. This uh, destination folder will hold all of the uh, JPEGs that are captured by Motion Meerkat in your video file. Okay, so let's start the initial parameter settings. Adapt the motion sensitivity based on hit rate. This is a true or false question, as noted by the question mark, and you can type either Y or N. Here I am going to adapt the motion sensitivity, and I'll explain what that does. Why? So this is the beginning value of the cumulative averaging. Lower values are more sensitive, higher values are uh, less sensitive, and see the wiki for more details on this. I'm going to use the default here, so I'm just going to press enter without typing anything else, and it'll make that 0 .3, 0 0.035, which you can see is labeled as the default here. Same thing here, I'm going to use the default for expected percentage of frames of motion. And basically what Motion Meerkat does is it looks every 10 minutes and says, okay, what percentage of frames was expected? If it's less than the percentage of frames, it increases sensitivity. If it's more than the expected percentage of frames, it decreases sensitivity. Um, it also provides a uh, floor value for sensitivity, since sensitivity can't be zero. And for all these things, I'm just going to have the defaults, so I'm pressing enter here. Okay, now we're back to the normal screen. And threshold for movement tolerance, ranging from zero to 255. Uh, zero would be anything that's movement we, we want to return. 255, the, we would occur no movement. And obviously, we wouldn't usually choose 255. I'm going to use the default value of 50, which you can see is slightly cut off here, but 50. Same thing here, minimum contour size. That's how big of an object are you willing to consider movement. Please see the wiki for more detailed explanations of each of these parameters. But here again, I'm just going to choose the default to help with our first installation. Our burn-in, which is a calibration time, meaning that Motion Meerkat will wait a certain number of minutes before beginning to detect motion. This is super helpful for deployment or other times where you don't want the initial frames to be included within the background. Here, we can absolutely set a frame rate. Uh, most cameras have frame rates embedded in their metadata, and Motion Meerkat can look that up very easily. However, if you find that Motion Meerkat is not performing well, or that you've compressed or otherwise altered your camera file, it's best to include set frame rate um, Yes. Here, for example, I'm on a PlotWatcher Pro camera, and I am going to say, yes, I do want to set the frame rate. And the frames per second here is 1. Does this video come from a PlotWatcher camera? Time-lapse cameras, such as the PlotWatcher camera, which you can see is my, my day six outdoors, and I highly recommend, um, uh, require a certain kind of settings of parameters. And this is a special setting, and obviously most users will probably not use this. But here, I'm going to say, yes, it does come from. If you type no, then yours is some other type of video file. Motion Meerkat will take in AVI, uh, MPEG, MTS, MOD, and a wide variety of video files. Basically, anything can read by FFmpeg software. And here, I'm going to say, subset the image by selecting a region of interest. Right now, I do not want to, but I'll come back and show that how that is done. So we're going to tell no. So here, you're going to print out. And for each frame, we're showing the different printouts. And it's done. There were a total of 49 frames in a file, and it found six candidate motion frames, and it had a hit rate of 12.24%, and the program will be exiting. So we can go quickly to uh, where I told it to save. I told it to save and see, I believe it just said test. Right there, see test, data, plot watcher pro. And here, these are the uh, candidate motion frames that were split to file. You'll see both the motion frames, as well as this tracking output, which says at what time within the video uh, these frames were spit out. So here, uh, the first frame was at the first second, the second frame, the fourth frame at the fourth second. And that makes sense given that we know with this file is one frame per second. When you have differential frame rates, this uh, time estimate is super helpful. Here are the candidate motion frames. And so you can see here that there's a little bullseye at what motion event was picked up, and it correctly identified the hummingbird within that frame. For very large files, um, I suggest you may get hundreds of frames returned, and I highly suggest downloading Fast Picture Viewer, which is a wonderful program um, which accelerates the process of reviewing uh, JPEGs. And once you have that installed, uh, you can uh, review uh, images quite, quite quickly. Um, it's not opening for one second, excuse me. I have a second screen off here so you can't quite see it. Picture viewer. So here, a fast picture viewer professional. There's a free version as well that's quite nice, um, and it's very helpful in loading all the frames. There we go. And so now we can quickly walk through frames, and we'll see that there were six frames total, and about one, two, looks like two of them 
uh, don't actually have the bird. Those we would call false positives. But here we have four that do have the bird and two that don't, as well as the f uh, 42 frames that were ignored. So the next thing we can do is explore a couple of other parameter settings within Motion Meerkat and understand exactly what it's doing. So again, by going to Program Files, you can go to Motion Meerkat, which has this little signia. And I'll show the next one, uh, which is often people want a region of interest. So we're going to go through this uh, a little more quickly. File, Video, Input. Again, I'm going to copy and paste from my... Sorry, place. Edit. Paste. Destination folder. I'm just going to call this, again, Test. Uh, here, I'm not going to adapt the center. Choosing the defaults for all the initial options. I do want to set the frame rate does come from Flavature. But now I'm going to say, yes, I would like a small region of interest. And let's see what this does. When I press yes, up pops the initial frame of the video. And this is going to allow me to set a region of interest. And all I do is click at the left top corner of where I want my box and drag to the right top corner. So here, I'm dragging. I'm releasing with my left mouse click. And now I'm ready. I hit escape. The Plot Watcher returns to me the new cropped frame, and continues on. So you can see now that when I look within the frames, I was only including things that uh, were part of the cropped area. So now we do have a couple new uh, background states that we missed, but you can see that all the bullseyes are now within the cropped area. And I can show that using the Fast Picture Viewer. Excuse me, opening it up that one more time. So that's it for right now. And there are plenty of other options that we can explore, but I think it's good for a first tutorial. Thank you for using Motion Meerkat, and if you have any problems, you're welcome to contact me. Um, ben Weinstein at gmail.com. Excuse me, Ben Weinstein 2010 at gmail.com. Thank you.